worshiping must worshiping must connect with him in spirit and in truth and when we begin to connect with him by the spirit and in the spirit the bible says actually you speak beyond the language of your understanding you get to a point you're speaking other language whether the languages of men or angels you're speaking the language of of the holy ghost the language of of heaven and the bible says you'll be speaking mysteries and assessing secret wisdom that were preordained for our glory so I'm saying we're going to pray. We're going to pray in the spirit. I mean, if we don't pray in the spirit, it's not prophetic. We've got to be prophetic. So we don't have, you know, like uh, a stereotype prayer format. Well, we're going to say, say this certain number of time and, and shout this and do that. No. At a point, we're going to say, come on, let's yield to the spirit. And if you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. If you can pray in tongues, call on the name of the Lord. Or proclaim the name of the Lord. So, uh, I, I want to thank all of you that have been praying for us and praying. Uh, like now, the whole church will become church online. And there are guys there, our multimedia guys, they are the one literally carrying the whole church and the whole ministry. And I think we need to appreciate those guys. You know, they're walking around the clock. You know, the Bible says, there are pillars on earth upon which God sets the world. So I'm saying to them, you guys are the pillar now that all of us are breaking upon to reach the world. So our multimedia guys are doing incredible things. If there's any way you can encourage them, please do it. Maybe through your feedback. Of course, you know, this is meant to be interactive. So your feedback is very, very critical. We need your feedback. That's how we're going to know you're there. And you can, yeah, yeah, sending some messages as we progress. I also want to thank, you know, some people that didn't even wait for emphasis about giving. I was telling a woman today, I said, wow, so thoughtful of you. Because just by herself, she, she just, you know, got it, I can't number, you know, and credit in some money. And I think uh, there have been quite some women doing that. I said, wow, maybe this is why when God wanted to come, to the world in human form, he used to come through a woman. And when Jesus resurrected, he gave he appeared first to a woman. Women are incredible. I think we guys, men, before we think of how to make ends meet, how to balance things up and calculate this. But you know, godly women of faith, they just they just follow the feeling of the spirit. So we appreciate people that are saying the word of God must continue to go forth, you know. You know, everything must keep running. Yeah, that people may withdraw back to their to their home or wherever, but the word of God must not be held back. So you can also, I'm sure you're gonna see our online channels of giving uh, later they will help us pull it. If you like, if you're moved by the spirit, even when we used to gather within the wall of the building. We, we allow you to be led by the Spirit of what you do. So that's by the way. The way I want us to start this prophetic prayer is by blessing the Lord. I call I call that a special, you know, privilege of kings and priests. There's a high privilege of of kings who are godly and divine priests. There's a high place of privilege they operate from. That is not as important as it is. That is not the place where you're begging God to do some stuff. The highest place is the place where you allow your soul, you speak to your soul to rise up and bless the Lord. The highest privilege, the highest place on earth is where you say, I just want to bless the Lord. Where you say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. And dare not forget all his benefits. That's, that's the highest place you can step up to. Amen. So I want us to start with blessing the Lord. I, I did a quick study. The Holy Ghost woke me up early hour of the morning. And, and was just showing me. Actually, the first person that, that as a priest, really blessed the Lord was Melchizedek. 
in Genesis chapter 14. You remember when Abraham was returning from the slaughter of kings where he went to rescue the people that were taken captive from Sodom and Gomorrah and where he rescued Lot and his family. And when he came back from that triumphant expedition, uh, before the king of Sodom would meet, meet him, the Bible said, Melchizedek, the priest of God, he was both a priest in the kingdom. He met Abraham. He didn't just bless Abraham. I want you to take a look at this. You can read it on your own later on in Genesis chapter 14 from verse 17 to the end. The Bible says Melchizedek came and gave Abraham bread and wine. And those are symbolic. Bread, you know, the bread of life, the will of God is what bread is. Jesus said, my bread is to do the will of him that sent me. And wine is to make the heart glad. It also represents the Holy Ghost. So anyway, Melchizedek gave Abraham bread and wine and blessed Abraham. This is how he blessed Abraham. And I'm blessing you because we are priests after the order of Melchizedek because we're connected with Jesus. So I'm blessing you the same way Melchizedek blessed Abraham. We can bless one another. So Melchizedek says to Abraham, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God. Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God. He, he was the one that brought Abraham into the revelation of the early Leon God, the, the Most High God. Uh, uh, Abraham was knowing God as the glorious God, the God of glory, as the El Shaddai. But Abraham began, Abraham began to connecting to know God as El Elion, the Most High. Because Melchizedek blessed him in the name of El Elion. But that's not where it stopped. Melchizedek in verse 20 of Genesis 14 says, And blessed be the Most High God who has delivered Abraham's enemy to his son. So it's amazing that Melchizedek didn't just bless Abraham. He blessed the Most High God can you imagine that? That in this mortal container, as mere mortal, in human flesh, as limited as we appear to be, it's not just that God can bless us. We can bless God. We can bless the most high God. That's the place I call a high place of privilege. So I want you to rise above all your feelings and the situation and the frustration and the discouragement and the disappointment and the shutdown and the lockdown and the delay and the things that are hanging and waiting and just get into a frequency and just tell us, you know what? I'm going to say to my soul, arise, oh my soul, and bless the Lord. Let's get to that high place, a mountain top place where you begin to say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless be the most high God. You know, you can't bless the most high God and remain low. When you're blessing the most high, you are rising higher. When you're blessing the most high, you go high. By blessing the most high, you go high. That's, that's, that's a principle. That's a powerful principle there. And so we see people like King David. So I say it's the privilege of kings and priests. In First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 10, David also blessed God. As a matter of fact, in Daniel chapter 4, I read from verse 34 to 36, Nebuchadnezzar, after God showed him that the Most High ruled in the affairs of men and set in power whomsoever he will, sometimes the meanness of men. That was a lesson he needed to learn so that he had to be dethroned and allowed to go, you know, in the wilderness for seven years. And all he learned, the Bible says, after seven years, he came to his senses. And he says, then I blessed the most high God. And my understanding returned to me. And then God restored my kingdom. That's a key there. That if you want more understanding, you do that by blessing God. Because you can't bless God. He's not a debtor. You can't bless God without God blessing you. If you want restoration, you don't start by begging. You don't start by asking God, give me this, give me that, give me this. You start by blessing God. That's what it means to worship. That's what it means to praise the Lord. You bless the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar said, when my understanding returned, I bless the Most High God and I acknowledge Him. He said, my majesty, my kingdom, everything he lost. 
was restored. So that's why I call it the high privilege of blessing. Now, when you get to the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, he said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of all mercies, the God of all compassion, the God of all comfort. He said, Blessed be that God who comfort us in all our troubles. When you bless that God of comfort, he comforts you. When you bless the God of compassion, you experience his compassion. When you bless the God of mercy, you experience his mercy. Listen to this. The same way he fathered our Lord Jesus Christ. That's how he fathers mercy and compassion and comfort. And when you bless him, you connect and collect what he does. He's a God that birth, not just Jesus Christ, the greatest miracle that ever lived, but mercy, comfort, compassion, and, and all of that. And then Ephesians chapter 1, he says, this is Paul also speaking, he says, Bless be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has blessed us. You know, you can't bless God except you know he has blessed you. It is out of the consciousness of his blessing that you bless him. You can give God what he hasn't given to you. He says we are blessed with our spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's why we can bless him. And also in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Peter says, Blessed be this God of our Lord Jesus Christ, this, the Father. He says, because he has begotten us, he has given birth to us unto a living hope. So these are the reasons, these are the reasons why we bless God. So I just want us to begin to pray and just bless the Lord. You know, do it like you are all by yourself in the presence of God. Just, just connect in the spirit that you don't need a special place, a special building. You don't need a special uh, gathering before you bless God. You don't need a special help. You don't need an intermediary. You can connect God with your spirit. He's the father of the spirit of all flesh. And just open your mouth like the psalmist and say, Lord, I bless you for this time, for this season in my life. Uh, one of my friends and my son in, in far away Australia, he sent me a message. He says he believes uh, this is not just going to be a time of chaos in the world. It may look like it's chaos. He said, but it's going to be a Kairos moment. It's not just about chaos. This is a special season. This is a, an appointed season. So you can say, Lord, I bless you for this time. I bless you for all that is going on. I bless you because I, am, I don't live in fear. I live in you. I bless you because I am not under. I am above only. I bless you because though my body is in the world, I live in Christ. In him I live and move and have my being. I bless you because you have translated me from the power of that. You've delivered me. I bless you because you have blessed me with all spiritual blessings. And say, my soul is blessing you, God. I do not forget your benefits. I know you've done so much, much more than I can ever, ever, ever mention. Bless the Lord, my soul. I want us to sing this song. I bless you, Lord. You are holy. And forever, you are Lord. I bless you, Lord. You are holy. Yes. Bless you, Lord. You, you are, are holy. holy. And forever you are God. I bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are God. Come on, let's sing. Spirit bless the Lord. Hallelujah, Let your soul you enjoy God. the wonders of His presence. I bless, bless you, Lord. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. And forever you are God. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. You are holy. You 
The heavens are open. Angels are ascending and descending. The spirit of the Lord is moving. Oh yes, the Lord, the life of God. The fountain of life is flowing. These are all invisible realities, but they are tangible. They are tangible. The virtue, the power of God is flowing to your spirit. And it's going to manifest as light, as illumination within your soul. You're going to rise with new understanding. The Bible says Jesus Christ, eternal life, who is God in the flesh. He, he has given us understanding. That is how he gives us life. He gives us understanding. If you read first John chapter 5, verse 20. So Jesus is shining on you. And within your soul, your mind, you will receive new understanding about your situation, about this time in your life, about this season, about what is going on. You're not going to remain in trepidation. You're not going to sink in despair. You, you are not meant to be discouraged. The Bible says when people are down, you will say there is a rising up. Your case is different. He says when darkness covers the earth, thick darkness, he says the Lord is rising, will rise upon you. The Lord is rising upon you. The Lord is rising upon you. If this is all we can do today, just connect our spirit together and join our spirit with the source of all spirit, with the, with, with the fountain of all spirit. He's the father of all spirit. He's the foundation of everything in existence. As we join with him, as we return to him as our source, we receive resources, we receive strength, as we return to him as our source, we receive salvation. And this is what is happening right now. This is what is happening right now. So let us pray. Let us pray in the spirit. I want you to just pray in the spirit. I want you to pray in the spirit. Because from this point, from this point, I want to speak to you about stepping up higher. Strengths, strength, supernatural strengths for mountain top operation. Mounting up with supernatural strength. Mounting up with supernatural strength. Rising to higher end. Rising to higher end. Rising to higher end. By the strength of the Lord. The Bible says in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40, it's a, it's a very favorite, uh, very favorite passage. He says, have you not known? Have you not heard? 
If you read from verse 28, that the everlasting Father is neither weary, he's never faint, he's never tired, he's never exhausted, his strength never abates, he's never perplexed, he's never overwhelmed, his strength never diminished. I said, don't you know that? That's, that's one of the reality. You know, the leaders of the world at different level may be exhausted, but not God. Then, Isaiah 40, if you read down from that verse 28 to 31, he says, among other things, he gives strength to the weak. Those who have no might, he increases strength, he gives power to the weak. God dispenses strength. The Bible says everyone that appeared before God, even as we are appearing before God and as we are connecting, everyone that appeared before God, they go from strength to strength. In other words, God do not allow you, He doesn't want you to ever connect with Him, come in with Him, and go back with the same level of strength you came with. He always makes sure, even if the former strength you have haven't expired, he always makes sure you go away from him or go back to face whatever you got to face with higher level of strength. And if there's any time we need strength, this is the time. If there's any time we need the strength of God, the supernatural strength of God, this is the time. Because the crisis is not meant to break us down. It's not meant to take us down. Like eagles, we're meant to rise upon the wings of the storm. We're meant to take advantage of the storm and rise high. But we need strength to rise high. And that is that 40. At the end of it, he says, those who wait upon the Lord, even when the young ones faint, when all the mighty people faint and are exhausted, those who know how to connect God, who trust God, who wait on God, they Mount up with wings as eagles. They exchange their former strength with a strength. They don't get weary, they don't faint. So I'm praying that even from this, this life transmission, or whenever you're watching this, that there will be a transmission of strength. It's strength into your inner man. There will be strength in your inner man. And surely I will tell you why we need this strength. We can't. We can't but get strength in that. And it's so important that Paul will pray over and over. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 11, Paul was praying that we'll be strengthened with all minds in the inner man. We'll be strengthened with all minds in the inner man. We need, we need strength in the inner man. We need strength in the inner man. God has all might, but we need the flow of that might. We need, we need the flow of that might in our inner mind. You know, it's not first the strength that comes to our body. It starts from inside our spirit. And then it, it manifests in our mind and it manifests in our body. The same thing is in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Paul said, I've been praying that the Lord will strengthen the believers in the inner man with all might according to his glorious power so Christ can dwell in we need strength to take in all that Christ uh, all that Christ potentially is all that Christ wants to be in us all that Christ is he's the whole universe that's bigger than this universe on his own we need strength to comprehend what Christ is our inheritance our position with him Paul says, I want to be strengthened so Christ can dwell in you by faith. Then you get rooted in love, in all the dimension of love, and be filled with the fullness of love. It takes strength. But Paul also says, we need to be strong in these final days so we can put on the whole armor of God. We need to be strong in the spirit and in power of his mind so we can put on the whole armor and stand to withstand. And wrestle with principalities, power, rulers of that, and all of those cosmic forces. So the Bible is so clear with it. This, this reality that we need strength. But more importantly, 
I want to pray that this prayer session will strengthen you. And even going further, maybe your own prayer watch, that you will feel in your spirit the hand of God strengthening you. You will experience an impartation of strength. You will experience God clothing you with strength. Clothing you with a garment of strength. Like garment of fire. You will experience your own month of transfiguration like Jesus did. The reason is because we are meant for mountain top operation. We are meant to rise to the mountain top. The reason we need to look up to God and bless God is because we're meant to go up as a matter of fact. That is how we can deal with the virus and the venom of fear, not just of, of Corona stuff, not just the COVID-19. The COVID-19. We need to be able to connect God, look up to God, receive strength to overcome the venom of every viper that might have beaten us. Every virus. We, we had a message, and I think it's going to be available online if you haven't gotten it, that talk about the need to overcome every spiritual virus. The fear is, is a worse virus than coronavirus. Worry and anxiety, hate, you know, and, and all of this negativity and bitterness and deception and loss, evil desires. There are worse viruses. But in Numbers 21, the Bible says, when the fairy serpent, when the fairy serpent was biting the children of Israel, God, God designed, God made an arrangement. The technology he put in place is Moses make a bruising serpent, an artificial serpent, put it on the pole. Anyone beaten by a viper, if you will look on the pole to the brazen serpent, the venom of the fairy serpent will be wiped out. So everyone that look lived, and it's all over scripture that all you need to do is look up to God and live. It's in Isaiah 45, verse 22. Prayer is looking up to God. Praying the Spirit is looking up to God. Worshiping is looking up to God. So you can draw strength. You can draw virtue that will flush out any venom of the viper, any virus, whether it is the one that is ravaging the world or the one that is customized. So we need to, as we pray now, as we pray in this prayer, we need to believe God for strength because Isaiah 40 verse 9 says we need to rise up to the mountain top where we're going to lift up our voice. The, the things God wants to show us, we can't see them in low places. We can't see them in the valley. When we are getting to the point of finish, when we're getting to the climax of the age, like it is happening, we need strength like Moses. The Bible said at 120, his strength did not abate and his sight was not dim. At 120, Moses did not die of exhaustion. Moses died out of divine satisfaction, not exhaustion. At 120, he had strength to climb to the mountain top. And his sight was not dim. He was able to see all the promised land. And in the realm of the spirit, when you can climb up and see what God wanted to see, you possess those things. So this is the time we need strength to climb higher so we can see further. We need strength to see beyond the crisis, beyond the virus. We need strength to know how God wants to reposition us. What is going to be happening after this? So as we pray in the spirit, I wanted to just begin to, to, to say by faith and pray to us and receive supernatural strength to rise up, strength for the mountain top, strength for, for angelic oppression, strength for mid-air, for heavenly realm oppression. The angels that proclaim judgment upon Babylon in the book of Revelation. See, they have strength to operate above the frequency of the earth. Hallelujah. Even the, the lamb that overcome the beast, if you read in Revelation 14, he's standing on top of Mount Zion, victorious, victorious. 
And the, the, John the Apostle, he says in Revelation 21 verse 10, he says, the angel that was showing me around at the point carried me to a high mountain. I said, let me show you the heavenly Jerusalem. Let me show you what is coming, the new things. God wants to bring new heaven into our realm, into our dimension. God wants to establish new earth. But we are going to experience those things as we receive strength to rise up. So let's pray now. Receive strength. Mali Hesu to Poliba na cantus to Koriba Halaya. Lazy Nema cantus to Koboriba. I pray that by the Holy Ghost. I pray that by the Holy Ghost. Lazy Nema cantus to Koboria. Beyond your understanding, your spirit will receive strength. Le Nima Kanda, that your spirit that is joined with Christ, in union with Christ, in one with Christ, for it is written, He that is joined with Christ is one with the Lord Jesus Christ. Experience the strength, the same power that lifts the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Oh, yes. The power of the everlasting covenant in his blood that brought that great shepherd from the grave. Experience the resurrection power. Experience the transformation power of Christ. The power that break the yoke of death, that abolish death and bring life and immortality to life. Receive his resurrection and life. Receive his breath. I pray for strength against prayerlessness. The Bible says the Holy Ghost take hold together with us against our weaknesses, against our infirmity. I ask that as we pray right now, that the Holy Spirit will take hold with your spirit against every infirmity, against every weakness, against every feebleness, against fear, against confusion, against disconnectedness and discouragement. I ask that the spirit of lukewarmness and prayerlessness and slothfulness and worldliness fade away from your life. I ask that there be a replacement, that the spirit of prayer and supplication will come upon you. For the Lord says, in the last days, when perilous times are happening, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. The Lord is pouring his spirit upon you for the fulfillment of the blessing of the latter day. Receive the pouring of the spirit. Be clothed with the power be baptized with the strength of the Spirit of God. For the strength of God is endless. The strength of God is inexhaustible. The strength of God is everlasting. The strength for you to step up, to rise higher, to get to the mountain top, to make proclamation, to proclaim your faith. Maluhuzi take riba. Oh, to declare the things you believe, that the communication of your faith may become more effective. Receive strength to lift up your voice, that you will not be, you will not be whispering and murmuring like ghosts that are buried in the grave. According to Isaiah 29 verse 4, I say your spirit is rising from the realm of the dead, from the realm of the dead. Your spirit is rising, they say rising again. Oh, for it is written, even dry bones arise again. I prophesy to every dry bones. God says the Lord, you shall live, you shall rise again, you shall live. Bones are coming together to their bones. Whatever have been broken, whatever have been disconnected, whatever have been disjointed, whatever have been scattered in your life, within your soul, concerning your destiny, I decree that by the move of the Spirit, by the power of God, let there be a rejoining. Let there be a coming together. Let bones connect with their bones. Let sin and flesh cover up the skeleton. Every skeletal oppression receive a covering from the presence of God. And I decree that the bread of life, the bread of life from the four winds of heaven will blow upon every good thing that is lying dormant, that is hibernating, that is lying dead. Come alive, come alive, that in the valley of dry bones an army will rise. I decree that your tomb and your grave be turned to a womb that is blessing new things. Miracles have been birthed in your life. Blessings have been birthed in your life. There's a new glory coming out of your life. Hebrews chapter 11. If you read from verse 32, he talks about people who were made strong out of their weakness. 
I decree, be made strong out of your weakness. The strength to stop the lion's mouth. The strength to stop the edge of the sword. The strength to quench the fiery flame of the virus and whatever the devil is releasing against you. The strength to bring your death back to life. The Bible says by faith, women receive their death back to life. The weak were made stronger. Lion's mouth was strong. They subdued kingdom. Receive that strength. The strength of overcomers, the strength to be triumphant, the strength to soar for higher frequency. The things that plagued you before, the things that beat you down before, the things that crossed you before, the things that perplexed you before, the things that overwhelmed you before, now they are under you. You are rising. You are rising. You are rising like the two witnesses. The Bible says after three and a half days, the bread of life from God entered into them and they rose upon their feet from the place of their death and they heard the voice of God calling them higher. The maker is calling you higher. Your maker, the voice of heaven. There is an upward call for you. You are rising up. Your testimony is not ending. Oh, the peace will not prevail over you. Everything that has been released to prevail against you is beating down for your sake. Your faith will not fail. Your strength will not fail. The Bible says, if you fail in the days of trouble of adversity, it's because your strength was little. That's Proverbs 24. So I say your strength will no longer, longer be little. Your strength will be as mighty as the strength that raised Jesus up. In the place of prayer, you'll be powerful. In the place of worship. Every morning when you rise up, you lift up your voice and say, Bless the most high God, the possessor of the heaven and earth. You rise up and you say, This is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and I'm glad in it. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. You will bless the Lord that daily load you with benefits. According to Psalm 68. You will rise up every day and say, The mercy of God upon me today is new. There is new mercy. There is new blessing for me. I decree that from today, from this moment, you will always experience a new strength. You will no longer wake up this courage. I want to pray for people that have, you know, affliction in any part of your body. Maybe you've been battling with a head condition. You know, and it's a very difficult time now that people can't even move around as, as, as freely as they used to be. I, 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 I know, it's not just that I feel it, it's not just that I believe it. It's, it's, it's all over here, right where you are. You know, there's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. I know the power of God is present. I know the heavens are open. I know the technology, the setup of the throne of God is present right where you are. Me and you now, there is no distance. And with the Lord Jesus Christ upon the throne. So I'm praying right now that healing, 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 healing virtue, like the river in, in Ezekiel 47, the healing of God, like the river of life, that whatever it touches, be healed and come alive. Let healing flow through your spirit. Let healing, consciousness of healing, comprehension of mysterious healing power of God flood your mind and begin to manifest in every cell of your body, in every organ. It does no matter what they call that sickness. The power of God, like liquid fire, is consuming. The breath of God, like brimstone, is consuming whatever have tried to consume your well-being. I pray for your loved one, anyone connected with you that is afflicted. I decree their deliverance. For he sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from all their affliction. Afflictions. The Lord is sending His word. It's running swiftly. The word of God is quick and powerful, and it's sharper than any twisted sword. It's reaching you right now. Listen to me. One of you, you are saying somebody. You're thinking, okay, maybe because of my sin, maybe because I did not serve God enough, maybe because I've not been doing what God want me to do. No, it's not by your righteousness. It's not by your deeds. The Bible says 
by your own work of righteousness, you can never make it. You can't receive anything from God. It's by grace. It's by grace. It's by grace. It's by the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, that's when he loved us. That's when he died for us. He's not holding anything against you. If you read in the book of Mark chapter 2, that man that was carried, carried on his stretcher, and they couldn't get him into the building because the place was congested, and they have to open the roof and the tire and brought him down. When they were bringing him, Jesus discerned his heart. He knew the man was saying, my sin put me in this condition. So Jesus didn't say be healed for it. He says your sins are forgiven. He says your sins are forgiven. And people say, how can you say sins are forgiven? Who can forgive sins? Even the people didn't say that. They were thinking. Jesus was picking the thoughts of people. He first picked the thought of the man. That what kept him on that stretcher was the consciousness of his sin. And he thought he could not be forgiven. And I hear the Lord is saying to you that, that you might be healed and be delivered and receive strength to rise up. Your sin are forgiven. Jesus is saying like he said to the woman in John chapter 8 that they said was caught in the very earth. He says, I do not condemn you. I give you power. He didn't say go and be tried. He said, I give you power. He said transmission and impartation of power. I give you power to go and sin. So the same power of the blood that set us free from our sin, set you free from your affliction. Will break the power of death, the yoke of every implement of death against you, everything released against you, every emotional garbage, every emotional topic, every psychological affliction. You commanded to wither. Commanded. And right where we start is how we're going to end. You are going to bless the Lord. Remember, it's the highest place of privilege. We're going to bless the Lord. So let's just begin to bless the Lord. 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 Bless the Lord, oh my soul. He forgives all your iniquity. He heals all your diseases. <laughs> yes. He forgives. He heals. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. He satisfies your life with good things. Your life is renewed right now. You are being renewed. There's a crown of mercy coming upon you. The devil will regret this coronavirus. Because it's an opportunity beyond boundaries to connect God, to bless God. And we're going to be bringing life Brokers like this on Facebook, our service online to us. But let's just go ahead and bless the Lord. Just bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I bless you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We're grateful for your mercy. For your mercy. It is by your mercy that we're not consumed. Your mercy and new every morning. Thank you for your mercy over the nations of the world. And we use this time, oh God. To ask that your mercy will touch every nation. Every nation in crisis right now. We pray your mercy will give understanding to the leaders and to the ruler. We pray that your mercy will flow like a stronger current. To cut off the rain of this virus. In the name of Jesus. We ask. That the Holy Spirit, like rivers of living water, will flow through this channel, through everyone connected with us now. Everyone that is connected with God, I ask that you become a channel for the expression and the extension of the life and the power of God. You become an instrument to heal the nations, to heal the cities, to heal the people. Receive not just for yourself, receive the flow as a kind pipe. Receive the flow of the life of God through you 
everyone you communicate with, even though there is social distance. Yes, everybody you speak to, everybody you send a message, you do video call, you do audio call. They, oh yes, there's a transmission of life through you. There's a transmission of resurrection power through you. Lazine manakundo sepali baliakide. You become a new instrument in the hand of God. You become his battle axe. Yeli You are anointed to bless people. You are anointed to like great people. You are anointed to lift them up, to turn them from their doom, from their darkness to light. Masuba lia katuja katuma lia kande silia ya galumbo lia gaduso tekeba haligeda be filled to the overflowing be filled to the running over ya zana manuko tekeba boshira the Lord is saying to you that His promises concerning you His promises concerning you are in force His promises cannot fail heaven and next the virus will pass away. But the promises of God, the word of God, they are here and they, they will never pass unfulfilled. Whatever God has promised you, and it looks like it's no longer possible, the Lord is saying it's not just that it's possible, it is potent, it is a force. This is a season that the promises of God is being fulfilled in your life like never before. Things you thought were far away, they've been brought close to you. Just like this, this life progress. Things you thought, the good things you think are so far away. Things you think were impossible. Just like what is happening in the world now. Some people couldn't imagine. We're going to see endless possibility on positive note. We're going to see God turning things around. The same way this negative, you know, this negative whole thing came on and it beats everybody in imagination. God is going to bring good and glorious things things that were thought to be impossible he says as he's bringing a turnaround in our life in your life in your situation this is a prophetic moment the turning of your captivity is going to be like dream it's going to be like dream in other words it's not going to be it's not going to be by a struggle it's not going to be by a struggle like Peter coming out of jail because an angel came and began to lead the way. And prison doors opening by themselves. The iron gate to the city opening by. Peter thought he was dreaming. That could only happen in a dream. And he got to the center of the city. And the Bible said he came to his senses and he said, I wasn't dreaming. So what is going to happen is the Lord by his angel by his presence, by the Holy Ghost, will take you over. And some things begin to happen supernaturally. Some things will... Favor is coming to you supernaturally. There are people that ought to remember you that have forgotten you. In a short while, they're going to reach out to you. You'll be remembered for good. The things that you have been deprived of and denied of that is now being rechanneled to you. It's going to happen like dream. And you say, what do I do to make it happen? Just believe. Just believe. He said, believe God. We shall be established. Believe his prophet. And you prosper. All you need to do. The, the Bible says the gospel is the power of God to those who believe. The power is in the gospel. Once you believe, the power flows. So the power is, it's not me that will make it happen. It's God. And his power is everywhere. His power is right where you are. His angels are right around you. Because you fear the Lord. That's why you're watching this. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encamp around those that fear him to minister to them. Angels are on the side. They will make way for you. And I want to pray for you. You have run out of supply. Even before the crisis, you don't have enough. Now, how do you make ends meet? So I want to pray for supernatural provision. I want to pray. That God will put in people's hearts to remember you and to send help to you. That those who have will reach out to help those who do not have. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we just pray that you move right now. That you lead us. Those of us that have, you point out to us people that don't have that we need to connect with. In the name of Jesus. But you that seems 
to be impoverished. It seems you don't have anything. Don't be downcast. Don't be depressed. Don't be discouraged. Don't accuse God. Bless the Lord. He says, I allow you to suffer hunger sometimes because I want to teach you something. Now, God has taught you that He can sustain you. So as you begin to reach out, connect people, you're going to see that people will respond to you differently. And you will have a testimony. You can send it to our Facebook page. You can send it. You can inbox us however you want to do. Or the next time we're online, we need to know. Because I know the power of God is flowing. I tell you, this is like I've never experienced it before. And it's not me. I think it's you drawing it. Because you know, when, when the woman came and taught Jesus and power went out and healed the woman, Jesus said, woman, it's your faith that made you whole. It's your faith. I mean, there's some people that are so strong in faith that are coming. I literally feel you pulling the power of God. And that power is not just right on the spot where you are. It's in your room. It's on your bed. It's around the corners of the house. It's in the ceiling. It's on the roof. It's in the foundation. It's in the premises. The kingdom of God is come upon you and upon your dwelling place. The days of heaven upon the earth have come upon you. So spend more time blessing the Lord. Spend more time blessing the Most High God. Praising Him, thanking Him, worshiping Him. Let me tell you, this is not going to crash. You know, we have hearing a lot of permutations and some eschatological interpretations. Maybe this is how everything is just going to get grinding. No, 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 no. God did not say we end the world with a virus. <laughs> okay. This, this, this. He says, he says in Isaiah, I think 54 verse 10, he says, even if mountains and everything is removed, my mercy, the covenant of mercy I have with you will not be removed. Right. So this, this is not coming to an end. Darkness has come. God has shown the people that they need him. Those who connect with God will rise. A new world is being created. A new order is being created. New things begin to happen. Let's make the necessary adjustment that we need to make so we can be more strategic. We can advance the kingdom of God more than ever before. We can help people to come out of darkness and come to earth. We can help people to know the love of God, to know the life that God wants them to live. This is all about reprogramming the world. This this God, you know, reforming things. This is God. This is God Himself. He He, he renewed the face of the earth. This is God. Satan is not in charge. This is not the devil that is calling the shots. And even your life and your faith is being reordered. There is restoration. There is new grace. There is greater glory. There are new blessings. So thank you for connecting with us. Let's, let's just end with a song. Thank you for joining with us. Thank you for spending this precious time. And I hope when you get a notice the next time you do tell your friends. And as a matter of fact you can send this page to people. Spread it from. This telecast, this broadcast is saturated with God. So just send it to people. It's not about us. It's about blessing. Love you. God bless you. See you again. You are the Lord. Let's go.